We've done something really interesting with our vegetable garden this year. Instead of having a typical vegetable garden, we've decided to create a garden made up of Asian food crops. We've got different Asian vegetables and spices and herbs and different food items that we're going to be growing in this garden this year. Well, keeping with that theme, it looks like we've got some large pieces of bamboo in the ground here, but these are actually hollow pieces of bamboo that we just slid over the top of some T-posts. We've got some rope here for support, and we've got some snow peas planted down here at the bottom that will be climbing on this, on this support. Right over here, we've planted some evergreen bunching onions. These are uh, a variety that are uh, perennial. These will be like little perennials here in our, in our vegetable garden but these don't really produce a very large bulb at the base. In fact, the bulb is only about as wide as the stems uh, develop uh, uh, into that same size. But these were really easy to grow. We started these from seed indoors, uh, got a lot of germination, and uh, the uh, evergreen bunching onions, uh, very easy to grow in the garden. We'll harvest these like we do scallions. We'll just uh, harvest them, chop up the uh, tops for green onions, and chop up the small bulbs as well. Well, right over here, we've got some more bamboo. We've created these bamboo wigwams for our garden, and the plant that we're going to grow on these is a yard-long bean. That's right, a bean that'll get to be about three feet long. It's a tender, stringless bean that uh, we'll harvest when it's about 12 inches long because that's when they'll taste the best. But we'll, we'll have to leave a few to get that really long size on them just for novelty's sake. Right here we've got some Chinese cabbage or Chinese mustard cabbage. You can call it pak choy or bok choy. But the, uh, the plants look similar to Swiss chard. They'll have these really nice leafy green uh, leaves and the uh, leaf stalks will have a nice white color. But these can be harvested and used as greens or they can be chopped up and used in stir fry. Now in our garden here we've planted everything in little squares or, or blocks typical of some Asian gardens. This is a technique used to conserve space. Right here we've got another trellis and not only are we going to have three foot long beans, we're going to grow yard long cucumbers on this support. So you'll have to tune in and uh, see how our, our extremely elongated vegetables perform for us. Right down here we've got a variety of Chinese kale. This is the Gailon Chinese kale. It's a tender, heat resistant variety. The uh, stalks, leaves, and even the flower buds can be chopped up and cooked like broccoli. So we'll be excited to see how these turn out. Well, a common pest to a lot of our, our new seedlings and transplants in the vegetable garden is the cutworm. And right here you can see some damage. We've got a leaf that's been severed. This one's been partially severed. It'll probably die also. But we also sometimes see complete plants that are cut off uh, at the ground and uh, uh, eaten or eventually will die. And because the cutworms come out and feed at night, we hardly ever see them in the garden. But I've collected a few here that uh, I want to show you. You can see some of these have kind of a blackish color. Some are more of a grayish color. And right here you can see the typical habit of uh, cutworms. Whenever they get uh, disturbed, they, they roll up in these, these coils, some more so than others but uh, kind of make that little C shape. But uh, Oklahoma has about seven different species of cutworms, and they all do pretty much the same damage. The cutworms like to hang out in the daytime underneath weeds or plant debris, and uh, that way they can keep out of the hot sun. Some of the older cutworms actually tunnel into the soil, and sometimes you can go out in your garden and you can find little pieces of vegetation kind of tucked down in those holes. Uh, that's where the cutworm has cut a leaf loose and is trying to drag it down below the ground to feed on it. So uh, uh, that's uh, some of the characteristics of these cutworms. You can see now they're kind of getting a little bit active and uh, really don't want these to escape into the garden here. But I collected these at my house when I was weeding in the garden. They were hanging out under the, under the weeds. 
So that lets us know that by keeping the weeds out of our garden, we can uh, get rid of those spaces where they like to hang out. Also, the young cutworms will be present near the surface of the soil. So just by tilling up our gardens, we can destroy a lot of those cutworms. Now these things can get to be about an inch and a half long, and once they uh, reach maturity, they uh, make a cocoon and turn into a moth. Well, uh, keeping the weeds out of the garden, keeping your garden tilled is one way to control cutworms, but you can also create some barriers around your seedlings. This is just a, a styrofoam coffee cup where I've cut the bottom out, and we can use this as a collar to place it over some of the plants if we want to. Uh, we could also get some strips of cardboard or other material and uh, put those around the plants. Just wrap that around the plant. It needs to be about three inches wide. I've got a stapler here, just put a couple staples here in the, here in the cardboard. And uh, once you get that stapled, just kind of work that into the soil. It needs to go down maybe about an inch, inch deep into the soil. That way the worms can't crawl underneath and also it's tall enough where it'll discourage them from crawling over, crawling over the top. Uh, another thing you can do is to take some nails or some straws or some other material and just insert those into the ground at the base of the plants, like so. And that will also discourage the feeding. It has to be right up against the stem of the plant, though. That way, when the worm is trying to cut around that stem, it tries to bite into that hard material, and uh, it wants to go and find a, a plant that's a little softer to chew on. Well, good luck. Uh, taking care of the cutworms in your garden and maybe you can use some of these devices to cut off the attack of the cutworms. <laughs>